This is Matt Ertz, the Madison County Historian. We are still uh, recording interviews pertaining to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we are really lucky to have Mike Dosher, a pharmacist for uh, Doherty Pharmacy, which is in Morrisville and Hamilton. Mike, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me, Matt. So for those that aren't familiar, I mean, a pharmacy is a pharmacy, but talk a little bit about how Doherty does business. So yeah, we're a, we're an independent, um, privately owned pharmacy, um, kind of your, your your quote unquote mom and pop shop. That um, our our name of the game is just customer service and really trying to uh, you know spend time with our patients and and uh, take care of our patients in the in the best way possible. Um, okay. Yeah, we're, we're, and, and the independent uh, ownership of that allows the freedom to do that, which is okay. nice. So talk a little bit when COVID-19 started to appear on your guys' radar and what your response was. Yeah, so I mean, uh, when it first came about, I think it was early March, um, really we were in the same boat as a lot of places, just trying to find answers and, and do what's best uh, to promote the safety of our community and our, our staff. Um, so, you know, a lot of our responsibility, I felt, was just to, to do that, was to put in practices that we're going to um, allow our, our staff and our, our uh, you know, our customers to come in and frequent the pharmacy um, safely uh, and responsibly. So you guys were considered, I'm assuming, an essential business. Correct. Yep. Okay. Did you have a lot of people coming in and asking questions? We did. Um, you know, there were so many unknowns about, about COVID-19 when it first popped up and there's still is unknowns that, uh, you know, part of our responsibility was to um, try to quell some fears, but also make sure that people were taking what was going on seriously, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and promoting safety and, and showing that they care about others in the community by, by practicing social distancing and, you know, wearing face masks. Have you guys had any problems or issues with people not wanting to wear them? For the most part, no. Um, really small fraction of people, which has been great. I mean, I know it's an inconvenience for everybody. Uh, it wouldn't be, you know, anyone's preference to wear it all the time, but uh, a face mask all the time. But, you know, to some respect, we have to do what, what we can um, to, to show that we do care about our community and our, our, the well-being of others. Now, a lot of places initially had to go to half staff. Did you guys have to do that? We didn't. Um, we, you know, we have uh, we have a pretty lean and mean staff at the pharmacy as is. Um, we run efficiently, and and really everyone at the pharmacy on a given day is a required individual to be there to to be able to take care of our our patients and customers safely and efficiently. So early on, there was a lot of issues with supply chains. I think everyone knows that toilet paper became a very hot commodity. Did you guys find that there was stuff like that, but also was there medicines that suddenly became significantly yeah. harder to get? Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely supply chain became an issue. So part of our responsibility and our, you know, our, our dealing with this process, we, we do purchase from several different wholesalers, uh, which allows us to kind of shop around and find find scarcely available product, but also, you know, as pharmacists, we, we do have the ability and the knowledge to, if there's a medication that's unavailable and totally out of stock at all of our warehouses, we can make a therapeutic recommendation to a provider um, for an alternative medication, whether it be in the same class of drugs that works in the same way, um, that, you know, that, that they can switch to so people aren't having gaps in therapy. Um, we also at Doherty were able to get our hands on some 99% isopropyl alcohol. I, you know, hand sanitizer was a big issue at the start of this, and no one was able to get any. So um, we found some al alcohol. Uh, we we followed the FDA's guidelines on compounding our own hand sanitizer, mixing with glycerin, distilled water, and hydrogen peroxide um, to make that readily available for our customers and our patients uh, that were in need of it. Yeah, and I think glycerin was actually something that was pretty hard to come by fairly yeah. quickly, too. All of the ingredients. I mean, you know, there's recipes was at with aloe, um, any of, you know, any of the ingredients, hydrogen peroxide even was tough to get for a little while. But um, we were just kind of aggressive about purchasing and making sure that we were in a position that we could take care of our customers. Have you found that now that we're three or four months in here, that the supply chains have started to get better again for the most part? Yeah, um, 
incrementally they're they're improving prescription drug wise absolutely uh you know there's less and less shortages of 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 certain things and typically the shortages that are going on are um to my knowledge unrelated to to covid-19 or any supply chain disrupted by that um but you know you're over the counter products you're you're uh, your hand sanitizer and thermometers and that sort of thing. Um, they're incrementally rolling those out now, um, starting to see a little bit of more of that. Available. And was that at least partially because those places could have been shut down for at least some period sure. of time? Sure. Whether, you know, whether the, the manufacturer was shut down or um, whether it be a, you know, that, that rush to purchase at the very beginning where it kind of, drained the the the, the stockpile uh yeah, to some aspirin extent. and tylenol were hard to find for a while they were yep they were aspirin tylenol vitamin c um elderberry uh, you know all your immune boosters that that people were were looking for at the onset of this it was tough to did, tough to get did you guys have to deal a lot with the questions and i forgive me i'm not great with drug names but there was the drug that at one point the president was pushing did you have to yeah. deal with a lot of questions about that we, d we definitely had our questions about it. Um, and, and again, it was kind of just our responsibility to, to put, you know, put uh, people's minds at ease. We got a lot of questions from, from individuals who were taking hydroxychloroquine for a, you know, a, a condition, whether it be lupus or um, rheumatoid arthritis or, you know, whatever those approved conditions were. Um, all of a sudden, now there's a rush to get hydroxychloroquine and, and uh, you know, it's tough to get. So, so, you know, we had to make sure that we had enough stock and supply to take care of our patients who were using it and depending on it for their conditions that they've been taking this drug for, uh, you know, months and years. Yeah. How did you guys on the fly adapt? Because obviously anyone in the medical field and, and actually anyone that was working period, you're getting these updates and sometimes they're not always 100% clear on what you have to do, or they change after you kind of make your first adaptation. Talk about yeah. having to be nimble and adapt on the fly during this process. Yeah, I guess the main thing would be to just make sure that we're always erring on the side of caution. Um, you know, if you hear two different things or hear, hear one guideline that says one thing and another that says other, uh, you kind of want to air on the cautious side of things you know when when the mask guideline was was um implemented we put a sign out front that that you know big letter said we require a face mask to enter the pharmacy um if you do not have a face mask we will come out to the out to the curbside to uh to hand you your medication um you know that's something that at doherty we've always done curbside and delivery but we were promoting curbside and delivery pickup a lot more aggressively at the start of this. Just, you know, there's a lot of, obviously at a pharmacy, we take care of a lot of elderly individuals who were nervous to come in or nervous to, you know, to, to be out in public. So um, our deliveries have gone up. Um, you know, the number of deliveries we make have gone up. The number of curbside pickups, which basically the person pulls up to the curbside, calls us, gives us their name, and we deliver the medication, whether they want it put in the trunk, whether they want it put in the back seat, just to minimize contact. That's, you know, all things that we've had to adapt and, and do, um, you know, to, to best take care of our patients. How do you think this guy, this, uh, let me rephrase that. How do you think this will impact your pharmacy in the future? Because we've talked to different manufacturers and places, and they've talked about the changes that have took place that probably won't go back for a lot of different reasons. Do you guys feel like that's going to be similar? Yeah. I mean, there, I think we're all going to have this in the back of our mind for a while or really the forefront of our mind for at least the immediate future. Um, but in the pharmacy world, I think, you know, this, this may be an opportunity for pharmacists to expand um, whether that be with, with testing um, whether that be with, with uh, you know, more vaccinations. We, we currently, immunize against uh, influenza, uh, pneumonia, uh, shingles, um, tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Um, with a COVID-19 vaccine potentially on the horizon, uh, you know, that could be something that, that pharmacies and pharmacists specifically as one of the most accessible healthcare providers um, can help out with and just do our part. That's a, see, th sometimes people say stuff and it triggers something. How would a rollout of um, 
the COVID-19 vaccine kind of take place? And would it make you guys nervous? Cause you're just going to be inundated with questions, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the rollout I would imagine would just be as they become available from the manufacturer, um, they will start to show up in our secondary wholesalers and, um, you know, I, I can't imagine there won't be a big rush uh, to, for, for patients to come in and get vaccinated. But, you know, we, we're in a, a good place and equipped to, to handle that as we, you know, as we can. Um, you know, we have, we have flu season rushes. We have, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, a lot of these vaccines can be done at the same time. It could be a situation where as the COVID-19 is, vaccine is rolled out, you know, you get your flu shot and you get your COVID shot. Um, it could be one of those one of those scenarios. So okay. I do think pharmacists are in a unique position where you don't need an appointment to come in. Typically, um, you just show up and and it's easily accessible. That's that's good to know. Is there anything else you'd like to say to folks um, about the process and what's going on and how you guys think you can help? Yeah, I mean, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us here at Doherty Pharmacy if you need anything or if you if you're uh, if you have any questions. Um, but really, the main take home point would be to just continue to stay safe and continue to follow um, follow the guidelines. Thank you very much, Mike, for taking part in talking with us today. Um, hopefully, we, hopefully we see you in the future when you're you're giving out vaccines and it's the near future. Yes, thank you, Matt. Yep. Bye now.